And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen one. burn off igniters initiated. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. So we're very excited to uh, to share with you uh, some of the uh, some of the work that our cadets, uh, faculty, researchers have done over the years. It was actually here in this wind tunnel behind me uh, that the separation tower um, for the Orion system uh, showed a, a separation issue from the uh, from the capsule. So cadets discovered that, shared the data with NASA, and and that system is now on the Artemis system. The Orion capsule is what will take the astronauts, which will carry the astronauts on top of the Artemis uh, space launch system. Uh, this is the, uh, the largest rocket that we've had since the Saturn V. Uh, it reuses a lot of the space shuttle parts. Uh, and the Orion piece is, is really where a lot of the work that has been done here. So the Orion capsule fits inside this, the different scales here, but the Orion capsule, which carries the astronauts, fits in here. There's a shroud. Uh, this is an escape tower, which in, it's like an ejection seat for a fighter. Uh, if there's a problem with all that liquid oxygen, all that liquid hydrogen, which is just a big bomb um, or potential for a big explosion, if there is a problem with that, these rocket motors on the escape tower have the ability to pull the capsule away from all of that highly explosive mixture and, and save the astronauts. Uh, so the cadets have the opportunity to to learn about dynamic stability, to learn about the aerodynamics, uh, the heating, uh, the stability, um, and how you actually test for that, how you take data from the wind tunnel, how you relate that data to the full-scale vehicle. They learn that by doing that on a real project. When Dr. Yakov came over uh, to both Vaughn and I and said, would you like to work on the, the Orion project? We were like, wait, you mean like the NASA-like project? And he goes, yeah, they're, they're talking with us and they want us to do this research and you could really be a part of this massive program for NASA and that was a total shock. Um, my mind was blown to be honest and then because I didn't even know this was like possible that I could do this sort of research. And specifically the research we're doing is really important to NASA because the, the dynamic pitch mechanism which gives three degrees of freedom but it gives those three degrees of freedom for both static and dynamic stability which means we have a capability to get dynamic cross-coupling terms that NASA doesn't know about and they don't really have a way to figure out right now. And so that's been a huge goal of our effort and it's been cool to present that to them as well. That effort took place over many years, several years, to evolve the actual shape of the capsule uh, because the capsule has to create enough drag to slow the uh, uh, vehicle down it also has to keep the crew safe, and it also has to make a safe landing. Uh, cadets were involved in absolutely every one of those projects, making direct contributions. And we also placed cadets down at Johnson Space Center each summer as part of this overall development. And so this system naturally will want to kind of rotate and orbit out of control until it will just spin and tumble. And now that wouldn't be very nice for the astronauts to experience, right? So, so NASA has tasked us with really giving a good characterization of the dynamic stability and static stability of this vehicle. Mostly looking at the very low speed uh, part of the descent phase for the Orion crew module. So when it gets down to half the speed of sound or less when the chutes are about to deploy, it kind of likes to, to kind of oscillate a little bit and then fully tumble. So that is our uh, main part of our research, and we can do that in our subsonic um, wind tunnel uh, behind us. Um, that allows us to get a lot of good data in that instability phase. It's really empowering for the cadets. They're doing graduate level research um, through the facilities that we have here. So this is the most instrumented aeronautics undergraduate facility in the world. And they'll take on these kind of challenges, and it's very motivational because they are, this is real world things. These are not made up research efforts, okay? These are contributing to a real problem, in this case, that NASA uh, has, and uh, they're asking us to actually solve that problem. The really exciting thing is that the cadets are often working on projects that they may very well fly. We have a lot of grads that become astronauts. 
So it's, it's highly probable that a cadet that was testing Orion in 10 years is actually riding in Orion to the moon. That'd be a dream come true, honestly. <laughs> so Pat and I both just received our jobs this past weekend. We both got pilot slots. So that is like the next step. Yeah, the word for me is grateful. I just feel really fortunate to be here. Kind of feel like I stumbled into it. And so I'm just really grateful. After a smooth ride to orbit, a perigee raise maneuver, and a translunar injection burn conducted by the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, Orion is now flying free, attached to the European service module, and on its journey to the moon.